Icing is one of the major weather hazards to aviation, particularly airframe icing, which is the focus of this video. Airframe or structural icing causes about five accidents a year with nearly half of them being fatal. Structural ice lessens lift and thrust, increases drag, and makes the airplane heavier, degrading all four forces of flight. Basically, all clouds at sub-freezing temperatures have icing potential, but thick, stratified clouds with a good deal of liquid water within them will produce the most hazardous icing at temperatures at or just below freezing. If your aircraft isn't rated for flight into known icing conditions with some kind of de-ice or anti-ice features, you need to stay clear of it. And for aircraft that are equipped, pilots should still take precautions to avoid or limit their exposure to icing conditions. Equipment has been known to fail in icing conditions, and pilots might fail to use the equipment properly. Like anything in aviation, avoidance begins in the flight planning stage. Information concerning icing can be obtained most directly from pilot reports, PIREPs. The location, time, altitude, temperature, and type of icing is reported. These PIREPs paint an incomplete picture of the icing environment, though, since they're limited to just aircraft that have experienced ice. We should dig deeper into the weather information to find out about icing risks. The National Weather Service has recently revamped their site, aviationweather.gov. Within the icing charts, we can click on the layers icon, sometimes called the hamburger, and add on one of four different icing products. Here we're seeing icing severity color coded based on the legend below, and we can also add in SLD or supercooled liquid droplets considered a major icing hazard, icing probabilities, and lowest freezing levels. Knowing the cloud layers is essential. METARs and TAPs will report cloud bases along a route of flight, which is only half the picture. Cloud tops are important to know too. If we plan a cruising altitude that'll keep us above clouds while allowing us to remain clear of icing on the departure and arrival, we could tell if a route is suitable. Pyreps can once again be helpful for cloud tops, but these still leave out part of the picture. The National Weather Service publishes charts showing forecasts for both the bases and the tops, including the sky coverage of the layers. Here we see near Philadelphia the overcast layer is forecast at 6,000 feet with tops at 16,000. We can move the slider right to see how the forecast changes later in the day. So by 00 Zulu, 8 hours from now, the skies over Philly are forecast to be clear. The presence of clouds is one portion of the requirement for icing, of course. Temperatures also need to be at or below freezing which is why we make a habit of checking the outside air temperature gauge and turning on the pitot heat immediately upon entering clouds. Foreflight has a freezing level analysis chart that shows the lowest freezing level depicted in hundreds of feet. If there are clouds above this altitude, it's a high likelihood you'll be picking up ice in them. Areas on the map depicted in dark blue have below freezing temperatures at the surface, so barring a temperature inversion, any clouds encountered in flight at any altitude in these areas carry an icing risk. Finally, airmets and sigmets for icing will be issued for a geographic area where the weather service determines the risk of icing is elevated to a hazardous level. Flight into clouds in these areas shouldn't be attempted unless your aircraft is rated for flight into known icing. Even with the most diligent pre-flight planning, we still need to stay vigilant for icing while in flight. We're vulnerable to ice on the initial climb out since lower speeds translate to higher angles of attack, exposing the underside of the wings to ice. Ice begins forming first on parts of the aircraft that protrude into the air, such as temperature gauges and pitot tubes. On structural components, ice will begin to form on narrower surfaces, such as the leading edges of the horizontal stabilizer and wheel fairings, before broader edges such as wing leading edges. Ice can accumulate in areas you won't be able to spot from the cockpit, especially if you're in a high-wing aircraft and can't see the wing's leading edges. Monitor your airspeed on climbout. If the same vertical climb speed requires a higher pitch attitude, airspeed will decrease, suggesting icing may be at play. In cruise too, changes in airspeed can be an early indication of a buildup of icing, as degraded performance requires a higher pitch attitude to maintain altitude. When flying with autopilot, it can be easy to be caught unaware of these changes. If you're hand flying, you notice pretty quickly needing to apply back pressure and pitch up in order to maintain altitude. It might be a good idea to switch off the autopilot and hand fly for a bit, if you're concerned about icing conditions. If this adds too much to the workload, you can leave the autopilot on and just keep a close eye on the airspeed, as well as the trim tap, checking for excessive pitch up inputs. It goes without saying that any icing conditions should be exited immediately. In the absence of more advanced equipment, turn the windshield defroster on high. 
If you're in IMC, have a good idea of where the cloud bases and tops are, as well as how far you need to descend or climb to get back above freezing temperatures. Don't hesitate to declare an emergency with ATC and let them know you need higher or lower. On an airway, you can request a descent down towards the minimum obstruction clearance altitude if you're still able to navigate. If you're in radar contact with ATC, you might even be able to ask to get as low as the controller's minimum vectoring altitude to see if warmer conditions might be found there. If you've just flown into a large icing cloud and there's clear air behind you, consider turning around. Let ATC know your request again and why and make gradual turns as icing will have degraded your aircraft performance. Picking up ice on the descent during an approach to land carries its own hazards. In an emergency or other pressing situation, you may have to descend through icing. Stay on top of the freezing cloud layer as long as possible when this is the case. Try to descend rapidly through the icing layer. This will not only minimize your exposure to ice, but keep your speed up and angle of attack down, doing your best to maintain a stabilized approach. Once in ice, avoid changing configurations. If flaps are up, leave them up. If they're down, leave them down. Any changes can negatively affect the angle of attack while distorting airflow over the wings and tail surfaces, reducing their effectiveness. Also, add about 25% more airspeed to compensate for the increased stall speed. Make gentle turns if needed and choose an approach to the longest runway possible. Lastly, delay extending the landing gear until you're sure you've got the runway made. If you make the jump to more advanced aircraft with de-icing and anti-icing systems, your icing risk assessment changes a great deal. 